Okay. Uh, take it away, Atul. Yeah. All right. So um, let me share my screen. Um, and then let me get started. All right. Let me just check if I have everything here. Yeah. Okay. So, and one more thing. Okay. So, uh, well, firstly, good morning, afternoon, or evening, everyone, depending on where you're located. Um, my name is Atul Kedia. Uh, I'm a sixth year PhD candidate at the University of Notre Dame. And uh, um, firstly, before talking about my talk itself, uh, I want to thank, uh, um, firstly, J Josh Favor for going through all the details of uh, the Laureen theory uh, and all the ch challenges that they went through and, uh, and the, the ones that are still uh, upcoming. And uh, then uh, I want to thank uh, the organizers, uh, in particular, Roland, uh, Steve, and uh, Sam Cup for uh, setting up the uh, tutorial server, which we'll be using extensively today and uh, for, for, this, uh, for this session. And, um, and uh, yeah, finally, uh, and most importantly, I guess, uh, to, thanks to uh, Maria Hamilton and uh, Bruno Giacomozzo for, for all, all the discussions we had before this talk uh, about uh, everything that we're gonna, we gonna discuss today. So, um, Thanks to everyone. And uh, so, yeah, uh, so in this talk, uh, uh, I'm gonna be, uh, we're gonna discussing, be discussing about how to generate binary neutron star initial data using Laureen, um, the theory of which we just uh, learned uh, in a lot of detail uh, right before. And uh, I want this to be a very interactive uh, tutorial like uh, setup. So uh, we will be uh, generating initial data literally uh, using the code Laureen and uh, so, uh, so that you, it gives you a workflow idea of uh, how to go, how to do that. And uh, so, yeah, feel free to interrupt me about with any of your questions at any point. Um, yeah. So, with that, uh, let's get started. Um, I'll go to my next slide. But for, before that, I want to mention that uh, I'm going to be using the uh, the abbreviation BNS for binary neutron stars all throughout, and ID for initial data all throughout. Um, and yeah, let's firstly discuss binary neutron stars, then go to initial data, and then to Lorene. Um, so binary neutron star or BNS, uh, well, there's many things to learn uh, uh, about physics uh, uh, via BNS. Firstly, the, whether, uh, the equational state of a neutron star, uh, whether it's stiff or soft or how it is, um, that can be uh, learned through uh, doing uh, binary neutron star simulations. Um, whether the in-spiral at large separations is well um, uh, approximated by post-Newtonian is an open problem. These kind of there's other uh, interesting problems why one, one could be interested in binary neutron stars. Um, so there's others, for example, uh, that whether they're the short sources for short gamma ray bursts, um, whether the merger is a hypermass hypermassive neutron star, the remnant of a merger is a hypermassive neutron star or black hole, and uh, how much time it stays as one or the other. Those are interesting. And whether it's uh, suspected to be a, a, a place, a, a so uh, um, a location for our process nucleosynthesis or the ejecta of a BNS merger is expected to be source for uh, our process nucleosynthesis. So th those are very interesting reasons why one would be interested in binary neutron stars. So, um, so how to do these simulations is by firstly forming some sort, some sort of initial data and then giving feeding it to a, 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 an evolution, a hydrodynamic evolution, evolution uh, evolver, sorry. Uh, hydrodynamic uh, evolver, uh, for example, like Lore, uh, like Einstein toolkit. So to make the initial data, one uses something like Lorene, or there's several other codes as well um, that uh, that Steve mentioned in the previous. Uh, sorry, not Steve. Josh mentioned in the previous talk. Uh, I just want to check the chat. Oh, uh, Shubhadeep uh, uh, asked a question that we'll be um, learning about hands-on tutorial. Yeah, it will be. Um, yeah, we will be doing some uh, tutorials. So yeah, in case if you don't have your uh, account set up on uh, the server, please do so. Uh, the code uh, was just sent to you by by Roland on the chat. So okay, yeah, G going back to my slide. So Lorene, it's publicly available. It solves uh, uh, elliptic equations by using multi-domain spectral method. And uh, most importantly, uh, there's modules within uh, or thorns within the Einstein toolkit that read uh, uh, that read uh, initial data pre prepared by Lorene. So that makes it usable with uh, Einstein toolkit. And so hence makes it very relevant for this, for this workshop. Uh, so now from here on, uh, we're gonna just be uh, 
looking at the code, Lorraine, and uh, preparing initial data. Um, now, I don't want to go into all the details of downloading it, but I just want to give it uh, um, in short over here. Um, so bef before going to that, there's two ways you can have you can obtain Lorene. One is through the website, uh, through Lorene's website itself, and the other one is by um, uh, when you download Einstein Toolkit, it is by default there. It's called Lorene Two, and it's by default there in the Cactus slash repo slash Lorene Two uh, directory. You will have to. It's a tar uh, file, so you need to extract it, and then there will be some. Um, fine tuning you'll have to do with respect to the libraries. Um, but it in the end, it works. And uh, many groups use, uh, for example, P3's group uses Lorene too. Other groups like Josh Faber's group uh, uses Lorene from the website uh, and Bruno Giacomazzo as well. So, um, uh, so either of those are fine. We're gonna be focusing on Lorene itself, uh, just, just, the, just the one from the website. So, if you have to download, which we you don't need to do today because we have it already set up on your uh, on on your tutorial tutorial account. Um, but if you have to, firstly, after solve, uh, uh, obtaining uh, all the prerequisites, you'd have to download using CVS. It's pretty straightforward. Takes about um, how much? Like uh, about less than a half less than half an hour. Um, and then before installing, you need to make a certain edit in one of the files. In Lorin, so in the Lorin directory, you go through and go to this file, and in line um, 852, um, you will have to invert some of the quantities. And then, um, if you compile, it'll be better. But it, that, that's only needed for unequal mass binary cases, not for equal mass binary cases, really, which we are going to deal today with, with today. But yeah, in general, having that done is better. Um, having set up that. Uh, the last couple of things you need to do to set up Lorene would be um, just setting up the environment uh, and uh, then copying the, the environment based on whether you're using a bash uh, shell or a CSH or TCS, uh, TCSH shell. Um, set the environment up and then a certain local uh, settings file needs to be copied. It's there. So for example, for Lorene, a uh, local for Linux machine, like for example, that I'm using, um, the the specific file that needs to be copied is uh, given in uh, as an example. Uh, so in Lorin directory, local settings examples, uh, followed by local settings, there'll be um, so certain examples for different machines. If you're using Mac, there's a there's a slightly different uh, um, local settings file. If you're using a cluster, uh, certain cluster for certain clusters, there there are examples over there given. But if you're using a different cluster, for example, my cluster at Notre Dame, I had to make my uh, my own local settings file to link all the libraries properly. So uh, yeah, that may be a little bit time consuming, consuming, but if you're using a simple Linux machine, it's pretty straightforward, just using this file. Um, so there's a question about, uh, is, this setup, uh, is this setup only necessary if we are not using the included Lorene 2, correct? Yes. Uh, yes, so this is all for Lorene that uh, that you uh, need to uh, that you download from the website, not for Lorene that comes within uh, within the Einstein toolkit. Um, yeah, and then finally you are ready to just hit make, and it takes about half an hour to an hour uh, to install. Um, so now at this point, let's uh, um, sorry before that. Um, yeah, so at this point you are you have Lorene installed for half an. It takes about half an hour or so. Um, so that will be done, but uh, since we have our tutorial server where everything is uh, almost readily made, um, let's go into that. And I would like everyone to um, to go to their uh, accounts and look for a file that's uh, by the name lorene.tar.gz. Uh, okay, let, let me go to my account. And I see, okay, I see the file lorene.tar.gz and if anyone, is not able to find this or has issues all throughout, please, this is supposed to be interactive. So speak up or uh, or type in the chat, preferably speak up so that I know uh, what to answer and uh, what's the question exactly. Um, yeah, so with that, so lorene.tar.gz is right there. And uh, my slides say that I need to extract it uh, from the terminal using uh, the tar ex extracting script. Um, okay, some people say they, do, they don't have it. Uh, 
let me refresh it and see if it's they should i think i thought i copied it to everyone okay um, nice. if yeah, not i, I believe yeah. it's in Etsy. i believe it's you can get a copy out of etsy scale uh, i'm sorry i just wanted to to say i have it but uh, i cannot uh, uh well i, I uh I've written the ta uh, XVS Loren uh, command, and uh, I get the, the error uh, tar uh, refusing to read archive contents from terminal. Uh, oh, uh, so I guess uh, I'll go to that just in a second. So if you have it, uh, you should open the terminal here. And uh, Federico, did you do that exactly? Yes, yes. Yeah, OK, OK. Mm, let's see. Um, I have a terminal open from before, but uh, I don't want to use this. Okay, it's taking a bit of time. Yeah, okay, so my terminal is here. Let me just do it once uh, on screen for everyone and let's see. Um, so it should be tar. Okay, it's taking time to record. There it is. Okay, firstly, let's do LS to see if it's all there. <laughs> this is taking more than more time than usual. Okay, okay, I see it's right there. I have some extra files uh, because I was preparing for this and so uh, don't get bothered by that. But let's do tar xvf and then Laureen, uh, the name. And uh, yeah, Federico, so you were not, uh, what was the issue you were, ha you were having? Uh, I uh, copy and paste the error. The, um in the in the chat oh. I did uh, exactly the same uh, thing that you did and i get uh, this you need to read uh, archive contents from terminal missing minus f option um yeah so do you want to add uh, minus f right at the end of it or sorry in between so sort of like, uh, if I put it here, R minus F, uh, actually, yeah, minus XVF. So it will be minus XVF. Um, and then Laureen dot uh, tar dot GZ. And if it's running for you, this shouldn't take this long. Uh, for me, it was typically taking like 20 seconds or so. Um, yeah, but uh, um, so for some uh, it, for some reason now it's taking longer because I guess I suppose everyone is using uh, the uh, the the, the server at the at the same time. Let me see. Someone said uh, we're going to get this file uh, if it doesn't appear on the home directory. Um, for those who cannot find, please try. Yeah, Roland has another command uh, given in the chat. Yeah, we can let this uh, keep going in the background. Uh, and Federico, please confirm if it's uh, doing now, as expected. Uh, uh, it's all uh, frozen. I think that's because everybody is using the server. So. Yeah. I'm trying to launch the the, the command uh, that uh, roll on the uh -huh. the chat. I suppose I can stop mine at least. But uh, let's see. Uh, and the people who didn't have access to it, do they have access to it now? Uh, to the to the tar file. Okay, uh, let's see if it loads and uh, yeah, okay, okay. 
So it may take some, some time. So let's, uh, after ha having hit that command, let's keep that in the background. We don't need to bother with it right now, right at the moment, because we'll get back to it in a, in a little while and hopefully it'll be done by then. So, okay, uh, let's, this is all the setting up of uh, Loreen. Um, and this usually takes like, including all the all the steps we did, probably takes about an hour or, or hour and a half, everything. But in the in the tarball that I've sent, uh, uh, every, all, all the setup has been done already. Um, the next things is uh, ne the next thing is about making initial data specifically for uh, BNS, and all that can be done. There's actually a couple, many different directories or many different. Um, uh, many different uh, directories in uh, uh, in Lorene that uh, that uh, correspond to different uh, initial data uh, codes uh, for binary neutron stars. There's a couple actually. There's one called uh, bin star within. So if you go in Lorene codes bin star, um, that's one. And there's a, another one called binary underscore star. Uh, those two are slightly different. One is the English version. One is the French version. I believe, and we're gonna just focus on the on Ben Star, the French version, because that's I think the more older and more robust one. Um, yeah, and let's just check if uh, okay, it's not done yet, but that's fine. Um, we don't need to worry about that anymore at, at the moment. Um, yeah, at this point, um, yeah, there's a question, small question: if installation for the tarball is faster, why isn't it distributed from the website itself? Is the tarball specific to the particular system? Uh, yes, I want to say I'm not that familiar with systems, but I believe so. Uh, um, yeah, the, tu the tutorial server is an Ubuntu machine, and uh, I made it. I built it on an Ubuntu machine, and I believe that's why uh, it may, may have been done that way. Um, yeah. So with that, uh, so the codes needed for BNS ID are a couple of them: init bin and coal, in particular. So init bin initializes the binary, um, places them basically, places the two stars at a certain separation, and then coal um, coalesces them. Uh, if anyone hears noise behind me, please let me know. Um, and anyway, so in it been initializes and coal coalesces the, uh, the, uh, the neutron stars, relaxes them based on the, uh, based on the equation of state. Um, and you need to build those codes as well, make in it bin and make coal. Um, and then further, lit bin can be used to do some basic virtualizations. So the command for that is make a lit bin, and all these are again done already in the pre in the in the version that uh, that we have distributed in the uh, in the tutorial server. Um, and someone's saying my page does not start. Uh, it says it is impossible to reach the page even though oh. I believe they're talking about the tutorial server page. And uh, for me, that was happening because when I didn't have the last slash sometimes, um, if you include the last slash, uh, it should work. Same for me for another person. Okay. Uh, let me just check one thing. Okay, mine is opening uh, on another terminal as well. Okay, anyway, so uh, hopefully that will get sorted and we still don't need the, the, the version, the Lorene itself. Let's discuss what's the, uh, or the essential pieces for preparing initial data. So now after having made these, all these files, all these uh, codes, the initial, uh, initial parameters needed for uh, preparing new neutron star initial data is that uh, are are a bunch of them. Uh, let's go by go through them one by one by one. Uh, firstly, par EOS one and two. So one would be for first star, two would be this for the second star, and these describe the equation of state of the star. We'll go into these in a lot of lot of detail later because um, we want to discuss all the equation of state formats. But let's go into the other file uh, other parameters. Um, so par grid. Uh, power grid uh, one and two describes the grid system you want to have around each star, right? And uh, yeah, the dimensions and the domain radii. Um, NZ would be the total number of domains you want to have. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, and uh, NZ, uh, ET, ET stands for eight wall, which is French for stars. 
Uh, that's the number of domains you want within the star. So one uh, is typically the number used. So these are probably, you, you don't need to change ever. Uh, NT and NP are, is the resolution in the angular uh, direction. And uh, in this example, we're using seven and four, but typically you should, you would have to change it to an even, this to an even number and uh, e, NT to the, uh, to one uh, plus that. So for example, 16, and this would be 17 and, um, and like that. And the number of points in the radial direction, um, these, the default ones are uh, just tell you the resolution in the radial direction, which is uh, for now we're, we're using a very less resolved uh, setup. But if you want to increase it, you can increase it to uh, something like 17 or 32. Um, so multiples of two is uh, preferred. Multiples of two plus one is preferred. Um, and yeah, and these are the domain, whether you want the domain to start at zero or um, the first one to start at zero, the next one to start at, at the boundary of the neutron star, the next one to start at boundary and half to, to, of the neutron star um, and so on. Um, yeah, so that those are all that. Um, let's just revisit. Yeah, actually, before you continue, could you um help people in the chat so there are a couple of questions yeah yeah um yeah because uh, the server is a little bit low steve is looking into this at the moment um so some people may not have even uh extracted loreen uh, just yeah yet. yeah yeah so if yeah. you could uh answer to merit and then uh, mario has another question about uh, loreen directly yeah yeah for, for sure yes uh, so merit is saying uh, my terminal just booted up and is there a specific command that we need to, we have to run yes uh, so after having opened the terminal, which will be from here, I hope you can see my um, my Jupyter Hub page. Yep. Uh, yeah, and so once you open the terminal, uh, the terminal would open something like this, and you should hit the command, um, which it's running really slow for me as well. Mm. Uh, you should tar hyphen x. VF how tar space minus XVF Loreen dot can I make this bigger? Suppose I can't dot GZ. Um, I may have put the wrong path. It should be in the uh, in your home directory itself. Uh, okay. Um, Oh, in the meanwhile, let me answer the other question from Mario. Uh, that's all I see in my Loreen2 directory. I do, uh, do I have to run the bash, uh, the build sh script? Oh, you've, so, okay, Mario, we, we can discuss Loreen2 uh, probably after, at the end of this uh, session. So um, yeah, we can reserve that question for later on. Okay, no uh, problem. Yeah, I, ju I just didn't see any uh, any of these um, uh, directories that you're showing in, on your screen, but that's because I'm using a different distribution, I guess. Uh, okay, okay. Um, the directories would be something like this. Um, yeah, so I don't have any of that inside Loreen 2. Oh, yeah. So there's, there is a tarball in, so for Loreen 2, there's a tarball within um, uh, Loreen 2. Uh, I would have to look at what the name of that is. Uh, okay. but it is there. Uh, so yeah, we can, we can discuss that, uh, at the end. Oh of yeah. I actually found one. Okay. We can talk about yeah, yeah. it later. Yeah. Okay. You'll have to extract that and then you'll get all of this. Ah, yeah. uh, okay. 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 Thanks. I think it's under dist. Yeah. Dist. Uh, yep. Yeah. I think we have, uh, yeah, it's, exa have it's exactly under, un under dist. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, that's solved. So I think we may have to wait for the server to clear. If you do see the file in your home, then you star, uh, yep. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Uh, that's, uh, that was Roland's comment on, uh, setting it up. So, uh, I suppose we've lost a bit of time, but that's okay. Uh, we're just, uh, all setting it up and that's an important thing to do. So, but yeah, once you have the terminal open, just type this command and it will take, since it's, there's, it's, uh, there's a lot of people using the terminal at the moment. Um, it may take a minute or so, uh, to extract it completely. Uh, but it, what if, if you're in case if you're doing it later on, if you're looking at this video later on, it should take uh, much less. It should it will probably take like thirty seconds or so. Uh, but okay, um, Eric, same here. And 
what is the question? I typed the command uh, in about five minutes. It hasn't shown. Yeah, so it is running really slow for everyone. Um, but uh, okay, so for demonstration purpose, at least I have a, a backup version of Lorene on my local machine as well. So we'll use that. Um, okay, so that is power grid. Um, and uh, there's, okay, Hamidi, the first command was, where is it? Yeah, tar, hi, tar my, space minus XVF uh, space Lorene uh, dot tar dot GZ. Uh, I'll put it in the chat actually, yeah. Yep. All right, so um, with that sorted, uh, Um, with that sorted, uh, let's, uh, so we've discussed our grid for now. Let's go into the other files, which is par in it. And uh, I see we are already running out of a uh, bunch of time, but okay. Uh, par in it is uh, where you describe the separation and the central log enthalpies of the two stars uh, for star one and star two, both in the same file. Um, the coordinate distance, 100 kilometers, is not, it's not really important. Uh, it's just a reference point for Lorene. Uh, you can just leave it as it is. Um, and then the initial central enthalpy of star one, you'd, you'd have to, you can feed that based on uh, what kind of mass of the binary uh, for the neutron stars you want and, uh, and so on. So, uh, and further, whether you want it to be co-rotating with the, with the, for the binary or with the, with the spin of the binary or whether you want it to be irrotational. You can modulate that. Uh, sorry, um, you said enthalpy. Do you mean log enthalpy? Uh, yes. Um, yes. Actually, yeah. So uh, I believe I will have to check that. Uh, um, yes, it's the log of the enthalpy. I think it's log, log yeah, of enthalpy minus one, if I remember. I'm going by memory. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Bruno. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, with that, the last. Uh, or actually not last, but one of the, one more important uh, file that is required is parcol.d, which is where you describe the first few uh, entries are the most important ones. Um, and uh, these are the facts they are. So firstly, um, point 0.8, for example, would mean that your separation of the two stars you want is 100 times point 0.8, so 80 kilometers. So instead, if you want 45 kilometers, you would put 0.45 here. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, people are- uh, Can you just tell me where are these files located? Yeah, so yeah, we'll get into that in a second. So, okay, if you have Lorene set up, um, if you go to, if you have Lorene extracted, if you go to Lorene followed by codes, Followed by bin star, which actually I I wanted to emphasize a little bit earlier, but I because of uh, because of the issues I forgot about that. But if code slash uh, Lorin slash code slash bin star is where we'll do all the binary neutron star stuff. Uh, everything uh, re relating to binary neutron stars, we'll be doing uh, doing doing that over here. And in that, um, I've made a special directory called uh, ET Workshop 2021, and in that you would see that uh, there's a bunch of files um, and in particular par grid, par grid one and two are already there. So um, what you, uh, you can access them and see them over here. So let me just open one of them, par grid two. This is par grid two, uh, as, exactly as, uh, the, as my slides and uh, then par init and par, uh, par coal are also here. Um, and then uh, we'll go into par EOSs. Um, I believe I won't be ha having time to go through all of them, but let's go through a couple of them uh, at least. Uh, but in the meanwhile, you can uh, take a look at par init and par coal and par grid through, uh, through here. Okay. So now let's go into, oh, and sorry about, uh, uh, about par, par coal. Yeah, you can, de you can define the mass of the binary uh, of, the, of each of the stars, the baryonic masses of each of the stars right here. Right, um, which are, these are probably the, the most important things you change. The others, 
there are some of them that may be important like this one and more max maybe something you want to change but not that important for the moment um equations of state formats supported um there's a bunch of them uh, let's just go go through some of them um which is firstly a simple polytropic equation of state so what i mean by equation of state is basically a relation between uh, the pressure and density of the nuclear matter. So what's the amount of pressure, uh, extra uh, repulsive pressure through, through degeneracy uh, of nuclear matter and through um, uh, strong repulsive nuclear forces? What's the amount of repulsive force pressure it exerts on its surroundings based on the density uh, it, it attains, uh, it has, uh, it's, it has at. And uh, that can be given as a relation of pressure versus density. Um, on the y-axis here on this plot, you can see it's pressure, logs of pressure, in fact, and uh, on the x-axis is densities, or rather logs of densities. A simple example of an equation of state is a polytropic equation of state, which is basically just a straight line. So if you look at this blue or the black curve, they're basically a straight line um, uh, describing the equation of state, uh, describing the relation between pressure and density. And uh, yeah, and and this is the most simplest form of equation of state um, in, in the log scale. If it's if it's uh, linear in uh, in the non-log scale, or um, or rather, pressure is directly uh, proportional to um, rho raised to gamma in this case. So that's a simple polytropic equation of state. Um, and Lorin, of course, accepts this, um, and you can find a sample at this directory. So within bin star that we were already at, if you go to parameters, if you go to parameters, there's a bunch of different options. Um, there's polytrope uh, irrotational, there's akmal irrotational, akmal co-rotational. Those are all very useful resources and we will, uh, if we have time, we will go through all of them, but, uh, but polytrope uh, irrotational is right there. And, uh, and yeah, so the, the setup for par EOS file for that, uh, for this equation of state type would be, uh, first you type, the, the type of the equation state is one for single polytrope. Um, and then the star number, whether it's par EOS one or par EOS two, for EOS two, it'll be two here instead of one. And then the adiabatic index goes here, the pressure coefficient, uh, the coefficient kappa goes in here um, and so on. So that's the simplest uh, uh, equation state format, probably not very useful because we have more sophisticated equation state formats today. Um, so uh, let's not go into go through all of them, the tabulated ones, but let's go to um, one specific one, which is the piecewise polytropic. Now, actually, before going into this, I want to show that samples of these, although I've given the directory, uh, they're also present in in your Lorene codes, Binstar, ET Workshop 2021 directory. So the first example was, uh, par US uh, one polytropic, it's right there. Then two and three, we, had to skip, we have to skip because we're not left with a lot of time. So th those will be the tabulated cases. And let me just open one of them and show, um, let's see, let's open uh, the compost format. So yeah, Lorene could can accept compost format uh, tabulated equation of state. And this is how the power file would look like. You would change, uh, your entry on the second line would be two, would be one for compost format. And then you would, for, uh, at the bottom, you'd have to label the equational state, give the name of the equational state. Um, yeah, any, any other issues going on in the chat? Um, people are saying thanks to Lucas for, uh, yeah, so that's great. So they, I, I suppose they've figured out how to, um, Get the uh, get the tar tarball, and hopefully everyone has extracted it. And so yeah, once you go to Lorene uh, after extracting, after you go to Lorene uh, codes Binstar ET Workshop 2021, you'll find these files, and we will be preparing initial data in just a couple of minutes. Let's go through the last, probably the most important form of equation of state uh, that uh, that Lorene will accept, will uh, use for initial data preparation which is, um, yeah, so Bruno mentions, oh yeah, so that's a, yeah, Bruno's mentioned that the link to Compose um, where you can actually extract, uh, where you can download the equation of state tables from. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks for that. 
Um, I suppose I have the link, but yeah, uh, we didn't have to have the time to go through this. Okay, so the piecewise polytropic, well, most equations of state are not uh, exactly linear uh, in the log pressure versus log density space. Um, they are based on nuclear physics calculations. They will be will have more variations, uh, and there are there could be patches where it is linear. So, for example, if you look at this gray curve, which is right underneath the red curve, uh, that's for SLY equation of state, um, and it is linear at certain patches, but then go changes to uh, not being linear. And so, um, uh, Reed et al. Uh, formed. Uh, prepared a new scheme of describing these equations of state in the form of piecewise polytropic. So what it means is, well, what piecewise polytropic means is uh, you make, make this equation of state or fit this equation of state with, with polytropes in, in different regions. So for example, this region, so this dotted line to the next dotted line, this region would be fit with one piece of uh, uh, polytrope. And then following that, the next region would be fit with another piece of polytrope. And by polytrope, I mean k rho raised to gamma sort of equation, right? Because uh, this is linear, so it should have a certain k rho raised to gamma form for it. And that that combination of kappa and gamma won't work for all of them, but there will be a different kappa and gamma for the different regions. And so this is very useful because then it, this, this compactifies your equation of state. Uh, you're able to um, uh, reduce the, uh, the many variables of a tabulated equation of state. And uh, um, and yeah, so and most importantly, Lorene is able to read it uh, uh, and prepare initial data, and then Einstein Tupel is able to use that same uh, polytropic format for preparing initial data for evolution. So it makes it very useful, and you can find a sample of this um, beyond this tutorial if you want to look for a sample of this. It's in Joshua Faber's uh, website, um, uh, where uh, yeah, where he has given examples of. Uh, this particular format, um, and I've copied uh, I've copied a screenshot of it over here, and it's also there in your directory ET Workshop 2021 at uh, RUS uh, four piecewise by the name RUS four piecewise. And uh, what you see is uh, basically the type of this equation of state is 110, labeled by the by the authors. Star one would be for par US one dot D par US for par US two. You would have it to be star two, right? And then the number of polytropes go in here. So since we have seven, typically one uses seven pieces, you could, if you want, you could increase it to a different number if you like, but seven pieces is pretty uh, standard. So yeah, seven pieces, the number of polytropes, and then following that, you would enter the adiabatic indices, starting with the lowest, start, starting with the lowest density. So for the lowest density, uh, the region that we don't really see over here, uh, the gamma was, uh, for this particular equation of state, it is 1.58 or so. Uh, for the next region, it is 1.2. Actually, you can see that over here. This uh, The second region has a gamma of 1.2 or so. The third region is less than one. So yeah, that's 0.6 and so on. So these are adiabatic indices. The next entry is kappa, um, in, in particular kappa zero. So kappa, there will be kappa for each region, but uh, but 6.8, this number it corresponds to the kappa for the lowest region, for the region corresponding to gamma uh, gamma zero, right? That's uh, that's this entry, and I just want to have this uh, uh, in in record for in case if you want to um, visit this again and uh, uh, make prepare your own initial uh, initial equation of state table. Uh, you would you could be you you could use this. Um, and then the next entry is pressure. So pressure. this is actually pressure divided by C squared at the first intersection, the first transition from, uh, 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 from the lower piece to a higher piece. So in this case, you could see it's uh, the pressure is something like 10 to the 23 or so, 24 maybe. Um, that divided by C squared in CGS units would bring something like 10 raised to three. And that's uh, the, the exponent of that is, comes in here. Um, following that, um, yeah, so following that, the, the next six entries are the transitions for in densities. So log of, uh, log of the densities uh, where the transition is happening. So log of this one point would be seven point something. 
log of the next one would be seven, 11 point uh, something and so forth, so, so on and so forth, all the way to the last one. So this is par, uh, this goes into your par EOS one, same similar thing goes into par EOS two, except you change star number to star uh, to two, right? And um, with that, uh, you, what you will have to do is place all these files that we discussed, uh, we, you'll have to place all these into uh, this directory, lorin slash code slash bin star, and then hit um, init run. So run the code init run, uh, the executable init run, and then call. And at the end of it all, you would be left with a file called resu.d, and that is your initial data. So uh, in the last few minutes that we have, let's try to do exactly that. Um, so let's go here. If you have your terminal open, uh, if you have your terminal open, copy um, copy piecewise, copy par us four dot d piecewise to let me let me just say what what you need to do par us four cp that to dot dot um, par us one dot d. So let me, I'll just put that in chat and uh, let me try to do that in my terminal as well. If, if it responds. Okay. Um, it is not responding. Any, any other comments or questions so far about the uh, equations of state or what kind of uh, like a, of a, or of about any parameter files. Is Loren assuming that tabulated equations of state are isentropic? Because I have the impression it cannot deal with slightly isentropic equations of yeah, state. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, yeah, it is. It is assuming that and uh, uh, isothermal as well. Right. Uh, sorry. Uh, where is the command? Uh, which directory? Yep, sorry. So after getting into lowering slash slash et top underscore twenty. After after going into um, lowering the 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 directory that I've mentioned uh, in the chat, after going to that directory, um, or sorry, yeah, after going to that directory, you would you would copy, um, you'd have to copy these equations of state, these some of these files in the directory right outside over here on bin star. Um, since we're running out of time, I guess I'll just show it on my local machine, how that is done. So I have it, uh, this is my local PC and uh, I'm using Windows subs subsystem for Linux. Um, codes and the bin star. Yep, and I have this directory right here. One minute. Oops, yep. So I have these files. Um, after going into code slash bin star slash et workshop, you would copy. Um, yeah, let's copy this one uh, into the directory right behind. So into bin star, so par as in the names par us one dot d. Okay, and then following that, seconds. also as par us two dot d. And um, and yeah, I have all of them copied. Uh, in my directory behind. So I suppose I can just run it and show it to you. It doesn't take too long. Um, let's see if it runs in 15 seconds. I guess not. But uh, that is the idea. So I hope uh, this gives you a basic gist of how it is done. Um, I know it was kind of rushed at the moment, but uh, uh, hopefully if, if you have more questions, uh, feel free to please ask ask uh, me or even Bruno in the next talk. I'm sure he'll be happy to answer. And uh, um, 
And uh, actually, yeah, before closing off, I just want to give a uh, mention that I want to mention that, uh, where is it? Um, yep, yeah. that uh, Maria Hamilton has made a, a Py IPython notebook for piecewise polytropic construction. And it is also there in your tutorial server. Uh, I believe, yes, it's by the name, let me zoom in. It's by this name, Maria July, 2021. And uh, please uh, feel free to use that. She, she, since she was traveling, she was not able to participate today. Uh, she had prior travel commitments, but otherwise, yeah. Um, please feel free to use that and learn more about piecewise polytropic format uh, formatting. And I saw